Hi guys, welcome back to Gage Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use this Sealy brake fluid uh, bleeder. I've used quite a few different variations of different brake bleeders over the years. And I've got to say for a DIY job, this one is probably the best one that you can get on the market. It's relatively cheap. You can get it off of Amazon. It's nice and easy. Um, it comes with uh, this connector, which is great for the um, German manufacturers, so Volkswagen Group vehicles, um, screw straight on. You can get different connector ends um, for obviously different applications of brake fluid bottles, but this is the one that you get with it. It's really good. You just fill it up with your quantity of brake fluid, pump it up, and you put it on. I've seen some others where you can attach them to um, the spare tire or to a tire to get the pressure in. It's not even worthwhile messing around with. You forget your pressure in your tyres or it should be around about two bars. You don't really want that much pressure in the system. So you can pump this up. You can see the pressure on the gauge there and then it's easy to do. So I'll show you how to do this. This is I'm going to carry out a brake fluid change on my Porsche. This is a Porsche Cayman S. Um, so you can see it. Obviously, this has got the Brembo brakes on it. But actually, uh, generally, any brake fluid change will be the same process and the same procedure. All right, let's go. Okay, so on my Porsche came in my um, brake fluid reservoir is at the top here. So you normally find a reservoir is going to be located uh, on the driver's part. So wherever your brakes are, think about that. That's where your master cylinder is going to be. So obviously you've got your brake servo here. So it's relatively straightforward. You just undo the cap um, and then you can screw the bit on. Now, before I do that, I just want to kind of purge the system almost and make sure I've got enough brake fluid up in the line because I don't want to put too much air in the system. So I've filled up my brake bleeder. I've put two litres of fluid in there at the moment because that's what my container uh, had. Um, I'll be looking to bleed around about two litres out of the whole system. I've got some more brake fluid, so I'll add some as I go. Um, but for now, I just want to just pump this up a little bit just to start getting some brake fluid through the pipe. There we go, so you can see it's just come up now to the through the pipe. You can see it's just starting to come out, now I'm not going to screw it on. Okay. Right now, so on my gauge, um, as I've mentioned earlier, I don't really want to go above two bar of uh, pressure, so I'm going to pump it up to just about one and a half. And obviously, as I'm then bleeding the system, that pressure will start to go down. So I will need to periodically come back and check the pressure um, and top it up. If I want to emergency release the pressure, I can just press that little valve there. And um, so you can't see it, there's a valve on the top here just to release the pressure. And obviously, the other thing that you need to try and uh, do is keep um, the bottle upright. So I've just perched it on top of the battery there. Um, so I can pump it up from here and um, then I can go and start bleeding the brakes. So whilst I'm now pumping it up, just going to be checking to make sure it's not leaking at the top here. So I've just got a bit of pressure in there and just checking to make sure there's no leaks coming from up the top. Because what I don't want to do is then pressurise the system up, go to the back of the car and then uh, discover that it's been leaking loads uh, back here. So when you start bleeding your brakes, it's recommended. Um, it's kind of best practice to start at the back. So I will start um, at the back left wheel, and then I'll do the back right, and then I'll come round to the front left and then the front right. So you typically you always start with the uh, wheel that is furthest away from the master cylinder. So I've got about one bar of pressure in there now, so that will be enough to go and start bleeding the brake. So I'll head to the rear. Okay, so I'm at the rear um, left. Now I've just released the, the brake nipple cover. So because this is the Brembo brakes, we've got two brake nipples, one on that side and one on that side. So I'm going to have to bleed them both. Now, typically you should be looking to be bleeding around 200 to 250 mil uh, per brake caliper so that's what I'll be looking to try and do 250 mil per brake caliper now you will need something to bleed the fluid into so this is a kind of bottle that I've 
uh, made up. So it's hard for you to see, you turn you around. So this is the bottle that I've made up. It's um, it's just got a bit of pipe on the end, just into a bottle. So obviously then I can uh, bleed the fluid out of. Now it'd be good if you can use something that's got some form of measurement on it. That way then you'll get a bit of an indication of actually how much fluid you've bled out of the system. So you to make sure you've got a good bit of uh, hose. That can then go onto the end of the pipe so you can bleed it through. I'll suggest you also have some uh, rag at the ready um, just in case it starts dripping down. You don't want to uh, drip any brake fluid on your nice painted calipers. So you can just push your bit of hose on. Like so. Now you can see my bit of hose here is clear. Now that... Uh, the idea of that is so I can see the brake fluid coming out and check see if there's any bubbles in it, etc. Any bubbles would indicate there's air in the system, so I don't want to see any uh, bubbles. And uh, I can just monitor and see the colour then of the fluid coming out. You can start to see it coming out now. Let that bleed through. Once you've had enough, just nip it back up and then you can move to the next one. Just let that drain into the bottle. Now these are uh, 11 mil, these um, bleed nipples, which is quite a uh, common size for uh, German manufacturers. It's rather tight. Okay, so that's that one done, and it's exactly the same process then on all the other wheels. I'll just join it up with some rag. Of course, you can use a bit of brake cleaner if you want, and just be careful on calipers like this because you don't want to uh, take any of the colour of the paint off. You can just check to make sure I can't see any leaks from there now, and then you can pop the cap back on. Okay, so I've done the two back brakes up to the front now, so I'm on the front um, left. And it's exactly the same process again. Um, you might be thinking, oh, I might need to bleed more out the fronts because these are the fronts and they're bigger brakes, but um, actually you're better off bleeding more from the fronts at the backs because um, you've got to allow for the fluid, your new fluid to travel from all the way up the top or at the front all the way to the rear. So that's where you generally start with the rear, so you can get that new fluid in the system. But again, if you're bleeding between 200 to 250 mil per wheel, that should be enough. So again, just watch my fluid come through, check for any bubbles, etc.
And then because we've got um, double bleed ports, we'll do the other one. Just going to keep an eye on my pressure, keeping an eye on my uh, fluid level in my bottle. Absolutely fine. Haven't actually even needed to go and top the pressure up. Obviously, as the pressure starts to drop, the speed at which the fluid is coming out is going to start to uh, decrease. Brake fluid is um, something which they call hygroscopic, which basically means it uh, absorbs moisture. So um, that's why you need to change brake fluid, and that's why it recommends to change it every kind of two years, because even if you're not using the car, um, it can still start to uh, absorb moisture and uh, it will start to go off. Obviously, if it starts to absorb moisture, that means then that the boiling point of the brake fluid will reduce. And if you get uh, moisture in your system, particularly um, near where the brakes are, um, obviously water boils at 100 degrees, um, brake fluid is much higher than that. Um, so if you're doing a lot of hard braking, that water in the system will then start to boil. Obviously that will then produce bubbles. Those bubbles will then produce um, kind of air in the system, which then if you're pressing hard on the brakes, obviously you can compress an air. You can't compress a liquid and that will then give you really spongy brakes. So that's why it's good to change your brake fluid. There's various different types of brake fluid out on the market. Uh, most of them are all dot four. Dot four is the recommended um, brake fluid to be using, obviously there are different dots if you're doing racing etc then you probably want a dot 5 but um, dot 4 is fine for all road going cars you can get obviously race fluid as well which obviously has an increased um, boiling point obviously if you're doing a lot of um, hard braking if you see any kind of Cars on track days, etc. See the brake discs glowing. So that just uh, goes to show how hot um, the brakes are going to be getting, and obviously that brake fluid needs to withstand that heat. So I'm just cleaning up these um, bleed nipples. Some bleed nipples that you have don't have a little ring part on it, or just literally go over the top. And if you lose it. I would recommend you try and replace it because what can happen then uh, dirt and dust will get inside the top of the uh, bleed nipple in the hole and then it will just um, block it up and whilst it may not seem important now but um, the next time you come to do the brake fluid change or the next person that comes to it probably find that that nipple will then be blocked it could then cause it to seize and then you'll have to end up taking that nipple all the way out which is a bit of a pain because obviously then you're going to be losing fluid and uh, you can't really bleed it properly or to take it out and clean it generally you can, sometimes you can clean them out sometimes you can't um, so it's just uh, something to look out for okay that's it then guys that's basically carrying out a brake fluid change I'm not going to show you on every single wheel because obviously it's uh, exactly the same process uh, on all of them but that's it um, this is process is going to be exactly the same on any car um, so it doesn't matter if, if this is a, a Porsche um, this is just how you do a brake fluid change and um, particularly using that um, CD brake pressure bleeder okay guys if you like these videos hit that thumbs up button uh, give us a subscribe and I'll see you in the next one